Hey, hey, Adam, can you hear me now? Hello. Yes. Oh, great. So you can hear me, right? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no, I think it was my uh, problem here. Okay. Uh, technology, the joys of technology. Here we are. Yes. Okay, uh, so Adam, so I'll, I'll introduce you myself. Okay, uh, so I, as you know, I'm Adi. Uh, I am a travel entrepreneur. Okay, uh, I am based out in India. And I am trying to understand, you know, what is the impact of Corona on different, uh, you know, nations tourism industry. So uh, before, before you, I had a talk with, uh, you know, uh, so there's a guy from Croatia. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I had a discussion with a uh, Kenya guy and so, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to understand what impact this Corona thing has made on tourism industry in different nations, be it a developed nation or, a, uh, you know, a developing country. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, and, you know, uh, regarding Canada, Canada is a beautiful country, right? Uh, Many of my friends are also there in Canada and I have seen the pictures. It is very beautiful. I have never been to Canada, but it is very beautiful. I know that. Uh, so Canada's GDP also is, uh, you know, anyhow dependent on tourism, right? So I think there's a 5% uh, uh, participation of Can uh, tourism in Canada's GDP. So that means there must be lots of, you know, uh, you know uh, job losses for the people. So what uh, the government is also doing. So just wanted to have a discussion on this, these points. Uh, so first of all, you know, if you would give me a quick introduction of yours and about your companies. So it would be great for us. Okay, well, nice to uh, to meet you, to virtually meet you, Adit, Adit, right? Yes, it is Adit. You can call me Adit. Okay, very similar name, uh, Adam, of course. So yes. um, yeah, so thank you for uh, for inviting me to talk this morning about uh, coronavirus and COVID and tourism. Um, I am. Uh, you may be able to hear. Actually, I'm not. I'm not a born Canadian like many, especially in Toronto. We're actually a, a city and country of immigrants going back hundreds of years and thousands of years. Uh, originally from England, so I married a, a Canadian. Yep. My wife, who's just in the other room. Uh, and I have been in the tourism industry here for over five years now. And I own um, two companies in Toronto. Mm -hmm. One is a free walking tours company, Toronto Free Walking Tours. Mm -hmm. The other one is is my newest venture, uh, which is called Experience Toronto Tours. So I, I do, um, I, I offer history tours, free walking tours, food tours, and uh, beer tours, and brewery tours. So. Uh, lots of things on offer here in Toronto, uh, but I am fairly new to the uh, to to the industry. About four or five years. Mm, okay, yeah, it's going very well. And um, yeah, we're based in Toronto and uh, looking to grow. But of course, things are a little bit um, worrisome right now. So everything's sort of up in the air. Yeah. And, uh, fortunately for for me and, and my business, I I don't have a um. Uh, bricks and mortar so i don't actually have a, an office so i'm not paying rent uh, for my business which is is fortunate for me at least yeah exactly okay uh so so, yeah. yep okay uh, so is there still a lockdown in canada i mean in toronto yes yeah, so we actually today it's, it's kind of interesting we're speaking today because uh today is one of the first days of the um the, the easing of lockdown. So essentially, I think we've reached stage one. Everybody's doing these stages of reopening. So uh, today's, I think, the, the start of stage one. Over the weekend, uh, some of the uh, marinas and golf courses and uh, things opened up that are easy to facilitate social distancing. So golf courses, marinas, nothing like gyms, uh, bars, restaurants there. They're all sort of off limits for now, but slowly but surely we're reopening, including, um, of course, uh, the construction industry, which is huge. It, it backs up the economy, the construction industry here. So, yeah, we, we are still under uh, essentially lockdown. Um, I don't like to use the word quarantine because, you know, we, we're not all in quarantine. We can go out and get fresh air. We can go to the shops uh, to get some food. So it's not like we're really under an immense lockdown but uh, things are still fairly quiet correct okay uh, so you know uh, by the way congrats on you know how canadian government has dealt with the situation of corona 
because you know uh, we have seen what happened with america so there are uh, america is hugely impacted with this and uh, you know there are lots of uh, life loss you know almost i think 90000 people uh, got died in america uh, but mm. your government they have done a very good job uh, it, the whole world is acknowledging that and uh, you know we have also heard that uh, there is some you know a very good amount of relief uh, given by your government to the uh, the people yeah so um it, it's it's remarkable what's happening down in the in the states i mean they are a much larger population so they have everything is amplified in in the USA because they have about 10 times as many people right so uh, they have more deaths now which is is of course very very sad anybody dying is really sad but they have more deaths than we have cases across the whole of Canada and Canada is um uh, including our water the second largest nation on earth if you include the the total area so yeah it's a very large country Canada so things are a little bit different here um most of our population is uh centralized very close to the US border so that's kind of the challenge because about 90% of of the entire canadian population lives within uh 60 miles or 100 kilometers of the US border so we are very much tied historically uh colonization war creating countries with with the USA so uh, people don't realize how how much our histories are linked together as well Uh, and that that applies today so what they do really affects us and of course because we live so close to the border not all canadians there are many canadians that live very far north it's a very large country but we really um do learn from them and they learn from us so we we hope they learn more from us without being too too unkind but um we do uh follow their lead sometimes and uh, and try not to make some of the mistakes they make as well. So the Canadian government I think's done a very good job. I think um we are a federation, technically we're we're called a confederation. Um but uh, I I think there's uh, a lot of power in the provinces. So I think in India you have uh, states, right? So you have your your federation as well, a very successful <clears throat> federation. So similar story here. uh where there's um a very very less uh, less centralized government so each province has a lot of power uh, for healthcare resource management uh, education is is provincial is that the same in uh, in india is it more centralized i forget i think it is more centralized compared to you know, right like in the united kingdom a very centralized system of government so what ontario does uh doesn't uh, toronto is the capital and the largest city in the country uh, but the capital of of the province of ontario excuse me uh, but it's also the largest city in the country so things are a little bit different here as well because we're a very large city um very wealthy city with lots of sirens sorry if you can hear the siren going by so again not to not to ramble and, and go off uh, off topic but um we, we are a, a federation of very strong provinces so things are done a little bit differently across the province um but in times of adversity like this uh we we really come together so it's really a um yeah it's really you know kind of a, a thumbs up and a bravo to to all canadians uh, across this vast country and all the provinces and territories that that really come together and are basically sort of guided by the, the the federal government in in the capital which is Ottawa but all the provinces have really come together and the federal government's laid out uh, their plans to to help reopen the country and to help with uh, with the job losses so when we can get on to that whenever you want to yeah yeah that's great okay uh, so you know we have heard that uh, you know canadian government uh, so they are uh, paying the rents of the people who have lost their job right yeah so they are also helping uh, businesses uh, so you know these these things are very difficult for developing nations it is very easy to say but these these things are very difficult we all know that but uh, still we also consider that you know uh, other nations should uh, learn the things from canadian uh, government because uh, in our news whenever we hear about canada we all, only hear the positive news so uh, people uh within the state are your customers or within within the canada are are they your customers or people coming from outside international travelers are they your customers 
Ah, so it's, that's a very interesting question. And uh, it, again, we really are tied uh, with the United States. Personally, my businesses and what I know and have seen from the, the Toronto tourism industry and, and Ontario, Southern Ontario, uh, we are um, really tied in with the American travelers uh, for uh, day trips uh, coming across the border uh, from New York State, from Vermont, uh, from other states, Michigan, we're on the border with Michigan as well. Uh, so really uh, a large chunk of, of my guests are from the United States, but also other countries around. We get a lot more Mexican travelers these days as well as the, Mex as the, the nation state, the country of Mexico. Uh, gets wealthier and, and people more of a middle class, they have money to travel. So uh, lots of Mexican visitors these days. And of course, your European visitors, uh, your Germans, English, uh, lots more Indians as well. Lots of people have families, lots of people want to come and see Canada. So uh, as, you, as you mentioned before, you've got friends from India. There's a sizable South Asian population. We're a very diverse city. So we get people from all over the world, especially into Toronto. But uh, across the board, um, really relying on the american on the american tourists uh, chief first and foremost and then everybody else after that yeah you know i was i was reading uh, somewhere that uh, you know most of the americans they they come to uh, canada and the people from china so they they are also your uh, you know uh, potential customers and you yeah, so I, I think that so oh, sorry sorry to, to cut you off there the um just following up from that the, i didn't even mention the chinese population as well we have a, a very sizable chinese canadian population and a very sizable um uh, group of tourists or visitors from china so i think we get uh, about half of our entire visitors are from china as well it's just a the, the chinese um how can i say it uh, the Chinese usually travel in large groups and they stick with the, the Chinese companies, Chinese tour companies. So I, I don't really see a sizable population of Chinese visitors, but they, they are a big number of, of people. Yeah, you know, so I have also closely monitored the market of India. Uh, so right. with the increase of, uh, you, know, the, uh, you know, the spending power of the people, they are now traveling to countries like America, Canada, Europe. So, you know, uh, they can also be a potential market for, uh, so, you know, what, what do you think will be the future of travel in Canada uh, for the rest of uh, the year? I mean, you know, uh, so what, what next now for tourism? Well, so the, um, the airports, uh, the arrivals are down, of course. I mean, tourism has really taken a hit. Uh, we were the first, uh, you probably heard this many times uh, mentioned, but we're essentially the first to, to go down and, and more than likely will be the last major industry to come back. So, uh, yeah, you've seen it at the airports, you've seen major layoffs across the country and across the world. I mean, millions of people laid off in the, in the tourism sector and the services, industries, hotels. Uh, so it's really everything's still up in the air. I think... Um, consumer trust in, in the travel industry is going to be very low. So I, I, I'm almost seeing uh, forecasting people looking for the, the autumn or fall. So starting their travel plans again uh, come September, October. So it might even be the summer is off limits. I mean, I, I don't see the international border really being that busy anytime soon. They've actually extended it uh, uh, another month so they've extended the Canadian United States border shut down for another month as far as I'm aware uh, don't quote me on that but it's I think it's been extended another month so it, in my personal opinion we're not going to see that many international travelers anytime soon and of course as we mentioned before uh, the uh, the reliance for for many of us on the American tourist the American visitor uh, will also take a major hit because if the borders aren't open then they won't be coming either. So I think first to come back will be local. Uh, I think many have said this because we're going to have to attract the local market, uh, really, really gear our, uh, in the tourism industry. I think in general, uh, they are gearing their, uh, re rehabbing, um, how can I say, they're, they're rehabbing or what's the word I'm looking for? They're uh, pushed to, to open again. They're, they're gearing it to local uh, tourists and local visitors. People come out in the house, come visit Toronto, come visit Montreal. And air travel. So uh, as, as for what they're doing, uh, we're, we're very much liaising with uh, following Greece's lead, following 
uh, what's happening in Italy and, and very much staying in touch with all the uh, countries around the world which are slowly starting to open up and, and really seeing what they are doing and how to, um, to, to focus and, on that. Uh, so when are you seeing the vaccine coming? Have you, have you ever had any uh, information from your government? I mean, any news? Uh, so, well, yeah, our, our government, I mean, uh, you know, to, to be fair to all governments, I'm sure you have the same problems in India, just like they have in England and the United States. Governments and politicians, you know, trying to get the truth out of them sometimes is very hard. But uh, to be fair to the government, uh, provincially and, and federally, you know, so locally and, and nationally, um, they've been really transparent. They've been re really honest with the people. Again, it's, it's you know, uh, how honest is anybody being? But uh, no, I, I think the vaccine uh, um, was, was first, uh, worked on in China. We're going to be able to um, use that Chinese lead really coming from China and then uh, put it to test in, I think, uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. So, they're saying it's going to start hitting trials at some time soon, but I'm not a medical expert, so I listen to the doctors, not the politicians, but we are making work on it, yeah, making progress. Okay, uh, so, you know, what measures you guys are going to take, uh, you know, uh, to give confidence to the customers or to the travelers who are coming, from, uh, who will be starting to come from, you know, the international uh, uh, nations, like, you know, when, when the lockdown will be released. So what measures you will uh, take for that? Yeah, well, I think locally people have been uh, fairly smart and fairly diligent with their uh, protective masks and, and gloves and distancing. So the problem with the place like Toronto, I mean, you know, Delhi and, and Mumbai and uh, large Karachi, Pakistan, Lahore, all these large cities in, in, in India and Pakistan and China, uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot more density. So we're not actually as dense as we think we are here. Uh, we, we think it's very busy and very tight, but compared to many cities around the world, uh, it's really not. So I think we'll be okay uh, welcoming people back. I think people will be a little hesitant to go out and, and do everything they, do, they used to do. Um, personally, for, for my tours or our tours, I, I, I keep the groups small, so I don't deal with big groups anyway. So I think it will be okay for anybody in the industry who, who already deals with small groups. Uh, the, the issue would be... Um, the, the vendors and the restaurants and all the businesses that we are used to frequenting and used to taking guests to, uh, what, what their practices and what their measures are, because that will affect how we run our tours as well. So it's not necessarily what I'm doing. It's, it's more what the breweries and what the restaurants and the takeout restaurants, what they're doing. And then we'll have to adapt to that. But provide the mask if necessary and, um, keep people apart and, and follow the, the local and provincial guidelines. Okay, uh, so if I As ask you particularly, you know, if I ask you particularly, uh, when are you going to travel outside Canada? I mean, so, uh, you know, after all these, uh, you know, travel bans and everything will be released. So when you think you can, you can be tra uh, traveling uh, outside Canada and where would you want to travel first? Oh, well, I, I, I'm a lifelong traveler. So uh, I've always got the, the phrases ants in the pants, right? So I'm always trying to go somewhere. Uh, but this, this year is, is off limits besides visiting my family who are actually in the United States. I'm a U.S. citizen myself. Okay. Uh, many Canadians are uh, by birth or by, by dual citizenship. Uh, so the, the first place that I would go is to visit my family. They're down in, in uh, sunny Florida. So uh, safely and hopefully within uh, the next month or so, because my father's not, not too well, he's a little sick. So it'll be Florida, and then after that, next year will be, uh, I think, uh, back to Europe. Okay, and have you ever been to India? I mean, Southeast Asia? No, I've, uh, India has been a dream of mine for, since I was a child. My, my, not to bore you, or, or my, um, when I was born, I was born in, uh, a part of Manchester in England known as the Curry Mile. So uh, I have had an affinity with uh, Asian food, Indian cooking, uh, the entire continent essentially since I was, literally since I was born. And if I could show you around my house right now, I've got a spice market in my house. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm always cooking uh, Asian, South Asian food. And, and that's a, it's a dream of mine. The only place I've been to in Asia is China, which was a wonderful trip. Uh, but of course, it's very different to to the Indian subcontinent. But I would love to 
come and visit you in India. Whereabouts in India are you, by the way? Uh, so I'm I'm uh, near to Mumbai. Okay. Yes, and you know uh, my wife is a very good cook. So if you want to learn some uh, new dishes of India, you can you know. Uh, so you're always welcome for that. Oh yeah, I'll I'll follow you on the uh, on the old social media, and you can send me some some yes videos and, and recipes. Yeah, and and whenever you are planning to come to India, you can you know just contact me, and I'll I'll arrange everything for you. So so yeah, I'd love to one day. We, my my family. My family actually goes up to Goa uh, every year. So, in fact, uh, speaking of coronavirus, it was a very interesting story. I'll just give you a very, very quick story. Mm. But our family friends, again, every year they're in Goa for weeks, weeks and weeks. They go for most of the winter. Mm. And they actually uh, were stuck, and the Canadian government uh, were very slow bringing them back from mm. Goa. So it was a very, very uh, treacherous and very traumatic uh, journey for them to Goa this time last or you know, six months ago. Three months ago, excuse me. Hmm. So uh, yeah, I'd love to come visit. So, so my location is just near to Goa. You know, so uh, it almost takes uh, seven to eight hours by road, so we can reach to Goa. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, so if you will have to sum up the situation at this point of time, and uh, you know, if you will have to sum up what uh, you know the, this Canadian government is doing, uh, so are you satisfied with that? Are you uh, is is the nation or the other people uh, you know in other industries are they satisfied with it? And uh, comparatively to other cities or other countries, uh, you know, uh, so what do you think? Uh, what things could have been done better? Okay, yeah, I, great question. I, I think um, in general, I'm I'm thoroughly happy with and pleased with how the the Canadian government or all levels of government have, have handled this. I mean, obviously, nothing's ever going to be perfect. We don't live in a perfect world. There's always going to be problems and things that could have been done different or should have been done different. But for the most part, I think that the government's got a very good handle. Uh, the be, between financial aid, uh, the emergency wage uh, subsidy, uh, the rent freezes, or the ability to have landlords freeze the rent, uh, they did. They did this um, rent freeze program where supposedly the federal government was going to pay 25 percent the provincial government 25 percent the tenant 25 percent and then the landlord just just eats the other quarter so it, it, there's many things in place they have this um uh, canadian uh, emergency response benefit so i don't know if you've heard about that in in india uh, the united states actually basically followed our lead because they don't have the social uh, systems in place that we have uh, which is another great reason why uh, living in Canada is, is a wonderful thing. Uh, we do take care of our people um, and the uh, social uh, system, the social benefit and safety net uh, is really taking care of, of people that need it right now. So again, I, I'm quite happy with how they've dealt with it. And it seems the Tories ministry again is more, um, how can I describe it? It's more it's reactive. Rather than preventative, it's more react reaction. So um, we're sort of just watching. And again, this is unprecedented and they don't have anything to look back on. So uh, again, without going off on too many tangents, I think every everybody's done a, a good job. And as a nation, we, we've come together uh, very well and, and we should be um, uh, quite happy with that. The, the only thing personally I think I would have done differently if I was in charge an important job if I was the prime minister and in charge I probably would have shut down uh, flights coming in from uh, certainly from from the epicenter early which was essentially Wuhan and China okay uh, so Adam can you hear me now can you hear me yeah okay can you hear me yeah, I can hear you. you. Said a very good point that you know the flight should have been, uh, you know, it should have been stopped very early. Uh, it is not only for Canadian government; it is for uh, you know I think for every government because no nation uh, understood the situation at that time. And there are some other things also like you know what China did is a different uh, different thing. But uh, okay, so if I ask you, uh, there are lots of customers in uh, Canada. Who really wants? To, who really travels to uh, different countries, right? So they travel abroad. So, uh, do you have any planning of opening a travel agency? 
Okay, it says I was muted for some reason. I, I, I'm not very good with technology, but it says I was muted. Let me know if you can't hear me, but while you can, I'll, I'll just go quickly. I'm actually a, uh, a qualified travel agent, but it's very expensive to get into the travel agent uh, industry here, or travel industry here as an agent. Uh, we have a very a strong and regulated travel um, organization. It's the, the uh, travel it's called TICO. I forget what the, the an acronym stands for, but it's TICO. So uh, it's, um, it's tough to get into and you have to have a lot of finances behind you. So uh, I, I, I've thought about it and uh, with obviously the current situation, uh, I'm almost glad that I didn't uh, invest the thousands of dollars to start. But there are many, many travel agencies here. And I wish them luck because, again, it's, uh, it's an un uncertain sort of uh, immediate future here. But no, I'm not, I'm not planning on getting into the travel industry anytime soon. Not in this province. Again, we are a uh, provincial-based uh, travel and uh, travel agency. Uh, so it might be different in, in other provinces, but in Ontario, it's an expensive game to get into. So not, not at this point. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, so thanks Adam, thanks a lot. You know, I'm very thankful to you for joining the discussion with me. Okay, uh, it was a great time and you gave the answers very maturely and you know, uh, so we at least now got to know what is happening in Canada and uh, you know, what is the approach of the people there now. Okay, uh, so thanks a lot from my side. Okay, I just wanted to let you know, you're probably wondering what this, this bright orange thing is behind my head for the past half an hour. Yeah, yeah, what, what, is, what is this? It's, it's a giant kayak. It's a, a Okay, kayak. okay, yes. And the, the weather is actually getting a lot better this week, so the wife and I, we have two of these, and we're going to go kayaking this week. So hey, great, that's great, what man. the bright orange object is behind me. I wish I could visit one day and, you know, uh, we, we together can do this, because I need to learn the skills for that. Yeah, come and visit. I'll show you where all the uh, the good food is, where all the, the activities are with the, the most diverse city in the world is Toronto. And um, yeah, we'll have a good away once we can travel again. Yes, sure, sure. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Adam. Thank you.